Is that you, Melissa? Do I look like Melissa? I can't look up, I'm too busy crafting. Right. Can you just tell me if you're Melissa, please? Do I sound like Melissa? I don't know, I'm too busy crafting to listen. Well, you obviously are listening because you're responding to me, so... No, I'm crafting. That makes no sense, Jess. I don't know what you're on about. Andrew, can you just tell me? Well, you know it's me because you just called me Andrew, didn't you? Can you pass me the glue, please? This one? I can't look, I'm holding the shells down. And that means you can't look? Is it this one? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, so, so you can look then? Did you see that um, email that head office sent to all the stores? You read your emails? Well, no. Uh, um, Alison Amazon um, phoned our shop yesterday and told me. I was going to say, I thought that would have been like the second time you've read the emails all year, which must be a new record for you. No, you know you know I don't read the emails. I've not been reading them for so long, it'd be a shame to start now. Why did Alison uh, phone to tell you about the email? Jess. Oh, she phoned to ask if I'd watched this TV show that we both like the night before. There was an episode on the night before. And also, she got mm. uh, um, her hand stuck in the cookie jar in the office. So I was phoning for a chat while she waited for help to arrive. Right. So, why did Alison phone you to tell you about the email? Oh, Jess. because we were on the phone for so long, we got chatting about craft and I said that I'd never tried decoupage. Right. So... And Alison asked if I'd seen the email and she, she asked in a way where it was like obvious that she knew I wouldn't have read it, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, you know, everyone, everyone would have Yeah, you know that. when she does that thing where she like asks a question when she already knows the answer? I know, do you know what? I know exactly what you mean. She did that to me at an area meeting once. An area meeting? Yeah, you know sometimes when I have to go to an area yeah, meeting... Yeah, I know what you mean, but why was Alison at an area meeting? Aren't those, aren't those just for management? They are, but she won the award for being the super supervisor, and part of the prize was being um, <coughs> invited to the management-only area meeting. That was the prize? One of the prizes. Dare I ask what the other prizes were? Um, Perhaps the... a pile of leaves and a sticker? Um, no, mind you, she'd probably like that sticker, because she does love stickers, doesn't she? Oh yeah, that's true. That probably wasn't the best example. She does actually love stickers. Well, maybe if you hadn't had such a sarcastic response... Well, what were the other prizes yeah. she won? Winning the opportunity to attend a boring area meeting doesn't sound like much of a prize to me. They're not always boring, to be fair. Sometimes you can learn some pretty cool stuff, actually. Like what? Like, at the last area meeting, Brittany Kettering told me that we're going to be getting a new bag to sell in store, which won't be available online. It will be exclusively available in store. So if people want to buy one, they have to physically come into the store to buy to buy that bag. Right. Bet you didn't know that. I thought you said you learned some pretty cool stuff. Well, it's I, I think it's pretty cool that mm. I knew and you didn't, isn't it? Mm. Wasn't it? Some exclusive behind-the-scenes content is always pretty cool. And learning is always cool. Right. Yeah, okay. Is the microphone on? Um, I, I don't know. I never know. Education is cool. Stay in school, oh kids. Oh my god, yes, okay, that's definitely not cool, being so close to the mic. I just really you, need to get the message across. Can you stop that? This is why no one listens to the podcast. This is not why no one listens. This is informative. Are we allowed to share this top secret information from the area meeting? Because you're just, sh you know, sharing it. You well, this people... is okay because they're not sending us those bags after all. So They're not... They're not sending the bags, no. So hmm. it's fine. Okay, so no offence, Andrew, but that wasn't particularly cool before, and now it's even less cool because it's something which is no longer happening. Yeah, but it was happening. And now it's not? And now it's not. Right, well, I guess that concludes the cool section of the podcast, unless you have anything else to add. Really? Yes. Um... To try and redeem yourself. Okay, well, well, at the same meeting, you know Paul Angelo, the manager of... Oh yeah, uh, is he the one with the, the Hedgehog, Hedgehog Hotel? Hotel? Yeah, 
I don't know the guy yet. Well, he managed to take three of the gift bags they give away at the end when everyone else only got one. Which is pretty cool. Right. It? Seems the opposite of cool to me. I mean, seems a bit, like, unfair to everyone else. Well, no, because they had some left over at the end and he was the last one to leave, so they just let him take three mm. home instead of... Are you yawning? Three. This is interesting, Jess. Three. They t- he took three home instead of one. So he wasn't sneaky about it? Not at all. There was no one else to give them to anyway, so... You know, might what as well. was in the gift bags? Not much, just a mug with the discount bookshop's logo on it and a random craft product. What random craft product did you get? Oh, I didn't take a gift bag. I didn't really want any more clutter in my house or in the office, so... Yeah. Okay, so Paul took yours then. That's why they were leftovers. Yeah, did I not say that? No. Oh yeah, he took mine. Yeah. Well, yes, I I know that now. The Andrew. other one, the other one he took belonged to Nadine Scales, who didn't turn up because she said that she was given the wrong address for the meeting. We all think that's a lie, though, because we were all sent the same information and we all made it apart from her. And the address that she said she was given was the address address of Legoland. Hmm, sounds a bit iffy. Plus, someone from the company follows her on social media, and it turns out that she'd just gone to Legoland with her partner and three kids. So for the day, so and then just she said that she that's the address she had, and that she just they she they sent her the wrong address. So basically, she just had a day in Legoland with her family, but they looked like they had a great time apparently. So well, good for her, I say. Jess, head office might be listening. Is this microphone microphone on? If we they start won't it? be listening because no one listens, Andrew. Well, can like, you can you, you know that? Can you could you? Maybe do a version where you where you don't say that just in case. Oh my god. Just well, I'm sure that Nadine was very sorry to have missed the area meeting and I'm sorry that she, I'm sorry to hear that she had such a great time with her family having fun at Legoland instead of spending hours and hours and hours and hours listening to pointless I mean not, not point, pointless information not about pointless. products which we will never sell. Not pointless, Jess. It's important information. Was that better? Well, not really, no. I'm not doing it again. That really took it out of me. Well, I suppose it'll have to do then. You're the one doing it. Anyway, the podcast, we so. haven't even started the episode yet, and I haven't even checked if the microphone is switched on, so all of that might have been a complete waste of time. The microphone has turned green on the top. Oh, no, there. that's just a bit of green icing from the donut I had a few months ago. I don't know. I don't know if it what? was green to begin with or whether it's mold. It's just it's a bit of donut is all I know. A few months ago. I always think that's the light as well and then I think no, donut. Do you not clean your microphone? Andrew, honestly, unless it's right in front of me and I'm using it, I forget I even have a microphone. So Fair enough. I do that with the sieve we have at home. How do you strain without a sieve? I just pour the water in the sink and lose about half the food every time. God, do you know what? Just when I think I know you, Andrew, you come out with something like that. Sorry. No, don't apologise to me. It's your food you're wasting. Oh. Oh, Andrew, my craft. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, man. Sorry, I just went to move and lent on it by accident. Look at it. Is it broken? Is it broken? Andrew, have you ever seen a shell in more pieces? Oh, sorry. Maybe I can can put it... Maybe it can be put back together or something. Have you you still got that glue? No, my shell ornament in the shape of a dinosaur Mm. holding a shrew is ruined. Gone forever, Mm. never to be seen again. Well, I I can still... I mean, I can still see it. Well, yes, so can I, but I wish I couldn't right now, to be honest. There are so many pieces. At least a hundred, I reckon. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven seven pieces. Yeah, but you didn't count all the pieces of my heart which broke when the ornament broke. How many pieces did your heart break into? Well, it's hard to put a number on it. Oh. Uh, and then there's and oh. then there's my confidence. That broke into pieces too. Were your confidence generally or Yeah, I'd say my confidence with making craft using shells. Uh, that's very specific. Yeah, my confidence broke into pieces as well. I reckon probably like a million pieces. You reckon or you know? So, no, I know. I know it did. Well, I'm sorry I broke your shell ornament. What what was it again? A dinosaur holding a shrew. Right, well, do you think it can be fixed? Um, or shall I just chuck it in the bin? Um, chuck it in the bin? Yeah, I think so. If I just grab the bin, do you want to just slide it in? Maybe I should get a dustpan and brush or something. If you just lift it up, 
on the paper. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, gonna carefully. fall. It's gonna fall. It should be all right. Yeah, careful of that. It's falling. It's the falling shards off. of shell are falling. Okay, just slide into the bin. Oh. There we go. Good riddance. Do you need Melissa? When? What do I when need? When I walked in, you um, assumed I was Melissa. Oh God, that seems like a lifetime ago now. Um, I just wanted to sh to show her the craft that I made. Oh. But now, I guess I can't. I can't do that unless you want to take the bin oh. down and show show what's in the bin. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. Did you take take a photo of it? No. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. It, it wasn't very good anyway. It was pretty good. No, I didn't quite manage to make the shells look like a shrew. The dinosaur wasn't bad, though. The dinosaur was great. I liked the shrew as well, though. Could you tell it was a shrew? Well... Well, okay. Well, that's a no then. No, it's not. It's not that it's a no. It's just that, you know, art's open to interpretation, isn't it? So great. Yes, it was great. Mm. It was. It. It was really good. I really liked it. <sighs> well, I should probably start the episode now. Sorry. Are you staying for this episode? Uh, I. Yes, if I can. You can indeed. Are you ready? Yeah. Then let's yeah. go! Oh. Too much enthusiasm. I was going to say. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. My name's Jess and I'll be your host as we travel through this episode, all hoping it'll be over soon. I'm here once again with my manager, Andrew. I'm here once again with my manager, Andrew. I never know if you want me to respond or not. Like, and today we'll be announcing the winner of the 2023 Halloween Photography Competition brought to you by the Discount Bookshop's very own Snappisaurus Rex Disposable Camera. You didn't tell me that. Well... Is it really sponsoring the competition? I didn't say that they were sponsoring the competition. What did you say? You definitely said something similar. I said that the competition's brought to you by the Discount Bookshop's very own Snappisaurus Rex Disposable Camera. Right. I really want to get rid of them because they're not selling anymore because it's not summer anymore. So, you know, I just really, I really want to get rid of them, Andrew. So you're advertising the fact that we sell disposable cameras by pretending that they're sponsoring the podcast? Well, not the podcast, just like the comp competition. I didn't, I'm not, pre I'm not pretending that they're sponsoring, like technically, like I didn't, I didn't say that. You basically said that. Well, you actually said that. So, it's you. Trust. Anyway, I had a feeling that someone would make a fuss about me saying that. I'm not so making a fuss. I'm just saying that you can't pretend that you... I'm not pretending. Respond. You're the one who said it. And also, because I knew that someone would bring me up, uh, up me saying that, I just want to say for the record that I worded it very specifically on purpose so that I wasn't not telling the truth. Because Jess. I said that the competition is brought to you by the Snappy Saurus Rex disposable camera because I knew it would be true because my neighbour Lottie entered the competition and she used the camera to take her spooky photo. Okay? I don't, I, I don't even know what any of those words you just said mean. But I'm so tired, do you so... Know what I'm, do you know what... You don't know what I didn't, do you know what I mean, though? Because is it okay? Like, it's okay, isn't it, if I say that I mean? Like, what I'm basically saying Jess, is... Jess, please stop. Can we just move on now? <sighs> yes. Where did I get to? Uh, the competition. Oh, yes. The Snappisaurus Rex disposable camera. It's really easy f to use for all ages. Fits in your pocket. Only costs £8. But now reduced to... Four? £4, I think. Mm -hmm. And looks like a dinosaur. I mean, what more could you want in what a you, camera? Why do you keep going on about the camera, Jess? Because we've got millions of them and they're not shifting. They're nearly all gone. I think that I think we've only got about four left. 
Only four left downstairs, maybe, but have you seen all the ones up here? Are they up here too? See over there by the door. Those are boxes of printer paper, aren't they? Those are, but I mean on top of those. Look on top of those. Oh my god. See, look, if I, if I show you... See this one here? All along here. <coughs> all along oh, here, wow. All down here. Wow. And see on top of there as well. What, are there more behind the dictionaries? About six boxes more, yeah. Okay, well, I didn't know that. I did not know... Millions of... That. I, I reckon there must be, I don't know, like 500 of them. Right, that's a lot of disposable cameras. I did not... Mm. Need, yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. Bit of a worry, actually. We need a lot loads. of disposable cameras to dispose of. Pretty classic that they'd send us loads of the same product, which doesn't even sell well to begin with, right? Isn't it, Andrew, right? Um... Do you not think that's a pretty classic thing for them to do? They do it all the time. I think I'm going to say no comment. When do you think you're going to say that? Now. When you're ready? No comment. Great, let's move on. Thank you to everyone who sent in spooky photos for yeah, the Halloween you. competition. Thank you very uh, Photography much. competition. I do realise that... It maybe wasn't the best idea to do a visual photography competition on a podcast, which, of course, is exclusively audio. But um, mm. there we are. How will the listeners see the photos? Well, they won't actually be able to see them. Okay. I think well, what we'll have to do is just describe each photo in great detail, just so that the listeners can visualise the photo entries, you know. How many have you picked? Have you got some winners or something? Well, thank you to all um, 47 of you who entered. I didn't even know we had one listener, never mind 47. So Alison listens. Oh, yeah, of course. So, sorry. Shout out to you, Alison. Um, Alison Damson, that is, for listening to every episode, liking, subscribing, rating the podcast mm. on every app you can listen to it on. 10 out of 10, top listener right there. So there were 47 entries. Yeah, 47 entries, and I have whittled them down to the final three. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, uh, find a cushion to hide behind or a hand to hold, because we will now attempt to describe to you the winning spooky photos. Do you need this on? Andrew, don't press that. What is it? It's the only thing keeping my laptop alive. Do you need it on? It is on. It is on. It is on. I have switched oh. it on. Okay. Please move your hand away from it. I, okay. You've already broken one thing today. I do not... I cannot... Thank you. Okay. So, okay sorry. I interrupted. Carry on. Okay. So, entry number I'm one sorry to is, all the uh, listeners out there. Sorry. Sorry. I, sorry. I did it again. Sorry. Entry number one comes from do you think i should say who's who it is at the start whose photo it is or should i say it at the end so the listeners can guess maybe just say it say it at the start okay or so just this... do it at the end sorry sorry that well, that wasn't very helpful i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know i can't make these decisions i don't know oh it's not gosh. my podcast do you know what i can't be bothered to try and remember at the end so i'm just going to say that this entry was sent in by oliver winthrop age 20 and he is a student studying photography so Were you allowed to enter if you did photography, like if you were like studying Well, photography? I suppose it didn't say you couldn't. Hmm. Seems pretty off to me, though. Well, you know, you should have said that they couldn't enter then, really, if they did photography. Well, it's not against the rules, but you'd think that it would be, you know, a given that it's not exactly in the spirit of the competition, especially as your photo will be up against children's entries. You know, they haven't got much photography experience, well, you I know? Th I think it's fair enough to be honest whatever i picked it anyway so in third place is oliver's photos entitled an autumnal walk he gave his a title which is which is a uh, very professional so um i have the photo in front of me and i guess i'll just describe it to you all the photo is relatively dark and in the center is a bench it appears that the photo was taken in a park and there is no one to be seen a lot of the leaves have fallen off the trees and there is a bird sitting atop a fence. Perhaps a crow or a pigeon or a sparrow. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not confident in my mm. knowledge of birds. But anyway, there's a bird on a fence. Um, up above, there are dark clouds in the deep blue sky. And a statue can be seen in the distance. On first glance, the statue appears to be that of an animal looking to the sky. 
Um, but on closer inspection, however, I see that it's in fact a statue of famous painter Clive McCormand. Um, and to be honest, that's what moved the photo down to third place for me, because I can't stand Clive's paintings. So nothing to do with your photography skills, Oliver. Um, you weren't to know. It's just one of those things. Remind me who Clive... Who Cl was it? Clive McCormand. He's that painter. Have you ever seen that painting of that person on a beach eating an ice cream and the seagull has swooped down and pushed it out of their hand and onto the ground? Mm, don't think so. I always remember very specifically that it was a mint choc chip ice cream. It's not ringing any bells. Yeah, it brings back a memory for me, that painting. A bad memory? Not really. It was pretty funny, actually, but, you know... What an unfortunate waste of ice cream. Just seeing it on the ground makes me pretty sad. Well, you do tend to get upset by wasted desserts, don't you? Do you know honest? what? I just really feel the loss, you know, when I see something like that. Anyway, well done to you, Oliver. You win a box of Snappy... Um, Snappy Saurus Rex disposable cameras. Is that seriously the prize? That is the third place prize, yes. Do you want to do the next one? Is it this one here? Yeah, there. So, second place goes to this photo taken by seven-year-old Daisy Miranda. Uh, there is what looks like an A4 piece, it's, uh, yeah, A4 piece of black card. A, so, a photo taken of an A4 piece of black card. Mm -hmm. um, to the left of the card is a piece of white card stuck on with PVA glue. Um, I can tell it's PVA glue because I can see where it's leaked out from underneath the white card where they've like pushed it down yeah. too much. Um, usually I just edge. ignore that, but I don't know if it's supposed to be a feature of the piece, so... And we're trying to give you the best picture possible so that you can, like, imagine what we're looking at. Anyway, I think the white card is supposed to represent a ghost. What do you... It's just literally just a round piece of card. What do you think? Andrew, I couldn't possibly say. You know, art is open to interpretation, and I'd hate for us to assume that it's a ghost when it could be, for example, an apparition or mm. um, perhaps a phantom. That is a good point. Um, fair enough. So <clears throat> underneath the white card, which I interpret as being a ghost, there is a, an orange circular piece of card, possibly to represent a pumpkin, but of course, who's to say? Who's to say? And um, apart from that, the only other thing in the photo is a tiny, um, a tiny cauldron with a hamster sitting in it, which I can only imagine belongs to Daisy. The hamster is what won me over, Andrew. I thought that might be the case. Look at its face. Is it spooky though? Like this is well, a spooky to be honest with you, competition, you know. To be honest with you, not many of them were very spooky. So these three were the best of a bad bunch. No Jess. offense to everyone who entered. I do appreciate it, but these were the best of a bad bunch. Jess, are you going to cut that out? You can't just say that. Probably not. At least they entered. Yes, well done to you, Daisy Miranda. You have won two boxes of Snappysaurus Rex disposable cameras. On to the winner now, and the winner of the 2023 Spooky Halloween Photography Photo competition halloween photography competition is meryl fox aged 72 aren't you going to clap i was saving my clapping for employee of the month why don't you just clap a bit i don't know if i have the meryl. energy to i don't know if i have the energy today even for meryl well you know meryl did take the time to enter the competition and did and did win so you can't oh, just oh fine oh my god How long does this have to go on for? I didn't expect that to go on for so long. Well, I didn't know that I'd have to do it at all. I never thought when I woke up this morning I'd have to spend so much of my day clapping. Is I'll it that much it. effort? I mean, you are sat down. It's not like it was like a standing ovation. I mean, yeah, you know. but I would have I would have done like a warm up or something if I'd known. Are you going to describe Meryl's photo, or shall I? If you're I, so tired. No, I'll do it if you like. Go for it. Okay, so here it is. Picture the scene. You're in a big spooky house. There's a huge ornate staircase in the center of the photo leading up to a landing with a bookshelf. Mm -hmm. On the bookshelf is a photo frame featuring a copy of the very photo which I'm looking at right now. Andrew, what? there is a photo of the photo that I'm looking at inside the photo I'm looking what? at. What? How? I no idea, but it gets even spookier. So at the bottom of the stairs, there's a large wooden desk with an old wooden chair. And on the desk is, you know, like desk things, like a range of pens, pencils, some notebooks, a dictionary, and another photo frame in it. Mm. And in that photo frame is a photo of the bookshelf 
which includes the other photo frame in it. You know, the, so, so like the photo, the oh photo God, that I'm looking at is in the photo f- right, frame on the bookshelf, and then yeah. on the desk there's a photo of the bookshelf which has no way. I know. Don't tell me there's another one. Well, not not another photo um, in a photo in a photo in a photo, but on the right hand wall, if you look. In the photo, oh, yeah. not that you can look, listeners, but Andrew can look. Yeah, I can on see. On the right-hand wall in the room, there is a tapestry. A tapestry. And when I first looked at it, I thought it was just a random room. But no, no, it's a tapestry of the room it's in. And what can you see in the photo frame on the bookshelf? Oh, my God. It's the photo that we're looking at right now. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. How do you think she did that? That's amazing. Um, she probably edited the photo. Or got someone to do it for her. Oh. Yeah, probably not real. Are you sure? I'm not sure, but I don't see how she managed to do that without some sneaky editing going on. Oh, well, that's not very good. Did you did you say that you weren't allowed to edit photos? In the... I can't remember, but I seem to think that although it wasn't in the spirit of the competition, it didn't technically say you couldn't edit the photo. Oh, well, that's disappointing. What's even more disappointing is that I'd say that the only person who actually sent us a proper spooky photo was Oliver Winthrop, who came third. It's just a shame that the photo had a statue of Clive McCormand in it. Mm. God, stand his paintings, you know? And even Oliver had experience in photography. Well, yeah. Another one of our competitions has been a disaster. Well, I would, I would say, to be fair, that they're your competitions rather than ours. I would say that they're head office's competitions rather than mine. Hmm. Are you going to say no comment? No comment. Well, I haven't done employee of the month yet, but seeing as I've done all of the clapping I can be bothered to do today, I'll just make it quick. So employee of the month this year, this, uh, year. this month. Employee of the month this year. This this month has honestly felt like a whole year. It's just, uh, mm. But employee of the month this month, I suppose, is um, Gracie Harper. Well, thank you so much for listening to uh, episode 27 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. Please take the time to like, subscribe, give us a good rating if you enjoyed. um, And if you're listening on an app. And um, why not share with a friend? Um, Anything to add, Andrew? No comment. Great. All right. Thanks a lot.